Alrighty boys, welcome back to the video. I'm about to one take raw dog this. Alright, listen, how do you make money in Bannerlord? Let's get right to it. I'm gonna go literally step to step. We're gonna go with it together. It's gonna be an adventure. It is literally 6 a.m., but I'm ready to give you guys the most enlightened information of your life. Alright, are you guys ready? Let's do it. Okay, so how do you get money in Bannerlord? Obviously, you can fight and you can get loot, but that's not what you're here for. Alright, let's go through the progression from the beginning of the game, kind of towards the end game, okay? So first, the best ways to make money, especially early on, um, it's quests. It's literally quests. It's the easiest way. It's the easiest thing you can do. Most quests don't take more than literally, I would say, about five minutes on average for most quests. Some quests are a little bit longer, but usually the quests that I'm talking about in this video are not that long, okay? So now, quests can either come from villages like these or towns like these. Also from AI lords that are running around, but those are kind of later on quests that you shouldn't focus on, especially in the beginning of the game. Now, quests that you should focus on is quests like these. The uh, Needs Help with Brigands, this is a quest where you just have to hunt down bandits and bandits will spawn all around the village. Let's Yours talk is real quick. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's do that. Let's hunt down those bands. And as you can see, he's going to pay us about 2,000 to hunt them down. Plus, once we actually attack all of these bandits, guess what? That's even more money. Now, what I want you to do is, I always want you to be stocked up on quests. Don't do one quest at a time. Those are rookie numbers. I want you to do a lot of quests at a time. I want you to maximize your potential and stay busy, busy. The more busy you are, even if you fail some quests, it's not that big of a deal. A little bit of relationship loss, it's not going to hurt you towards the end, all right? Not that big of a deal. Now, what quest goes good with this quest right here, right? So since this quest is going to make it so a lot of bandits spawn around, as you can see, we're just going to wait a little bit. Boom, there's one bandit party. And they're going to slowly start spawning around. There's another bandit party. And uh, usually if there's a hideout, those type of bandits are going to come out as well. As you can see, we have a Sea Raider hideout over here. So some Sea Raiders will be on this side as well for us to take. Let's see if they're there. Let's go over here. Don't disappoint me. There you go. We got some Sea Raiders here as well. So with this quest, what I suggest you do is a uh, quest that go really good with this one is the landowner needs manual labors quest. Now that quest is also found in villages. That quest pretty much wants you to bring back bandit prisoners. Now why does this quest go great with that quest? Well simple. Once I defeat these parties, I'm going to get prisoners. And then I can sell those prisoners to the, ma the landowner needs manual labors, uh, what's it called? Quest giver. And why is that better than selling the towns? Because he pays three times the price for the prisoner, if they are a bandit, than a town would. Again, very good money. Now, also another quest that works really well with this quest is the train troops quest. Again, found in villages. What does the train troops quest do? They give you about, I think about five troops, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. You train them to go from tier one to tier two, and then you drop them back off. You don't even actually have to drop them back off. You can send the troops back to the quest giver. So you don't actually have to go back to that uh, village to return the troops. He will pay you a amount for that. And it's very easy to do with this quest because you're gonna be fighting low level bandits, which makes it very easy for your level one recruits to level up. So questing is the first way. So that is another thing you could do. Also, whenever you take out a hideout, uh, there are two quests, one located in villages and one located in a town. You can take both quests at the same time. And when you take out the uh, hideout, you will not only get the rewards from the hideout, you're going to get the rewards from the quest from the village and also the quest from the town. Now, if you're wondering, hey, can I get the same uh, quest double up? Can I double up on the same quest? For example, look. So we have this quest right here, need help with brigands. And we also have a quest in this village right next to it, also need help with brigands. You cannot take two of the same quests, unfortunately. Okay? You can take as a mixture, as in you can take all the different quests at the same time, but you can't take two quests that are the same from two different villages or two different towns. You can't do that, unfortunately. But when it comes to taking out the hideout, there is a quest in the village and there is a quest in the town. They are titled differently, but they are exactly the same quest. So whenever you find a hideout, before you take it out, make sure you go um, to the nearby uh, villages and the nearby town to see if that quest is available. So you can double up or even triple up on your money. Now, once you have some money in your quest, what are you going to do with this money? We're going to make this money work for you. Okay, how do you do that? You go to towns. First of all, you go to a town. Now, a town is going to give you two ways to make this money. You got workshops and you got caravans. Okay, 
So how do you do this? Uh, it's very simple. You buy it from the nobles, both the workshop and both the caravans, okay? For the workshop, you only need money up front. For the caravans, you need money and a companion up front. How do you get a companion? Very simple. You go to the tavern district of any uh, town, and usually they will have a companion or more available for you to get. They don't cost that much. Not, you know, like, let's see how much they cost right now for this Peace one. To you. It's really not that big of a cost. There you go. About 500. Uh, I think it's kind of like on the higher side. It might be sometimes less, sometimes a little bit more. Depending on the skills that they have, but it doesn't really matter when you're starting out about what skills is best for the caravan. You can minimize and maximize a little bit later on, but if you're struggling to make money early on you need to start getting some caravans because they're very important okay now also if you want to get specific companions you go to your encyclopedia all right this right over here you go to your heroes scroll down click wanderer and these are all the available uh companions out uh what's called out in the world and they do spawn over time so if you don't see the one you want or there's not a lot on this list you can get them later on as they spawn in now, how do you purchase workshops and how do you purchase caravans? Workshops are pretty simple. As you can see, uh, if you scroll over the nobles' names, um, there will be some that own certain things. Like a wine press, that is a workshop. As you can see, owner of wine press. This person is an owner of a tannery. And this person is an owner of a brewery. Now, you might be wondering, which ones are the best? Well, there are a bunch of people online that tell you which one are the best for each single patch. You can go by those numbers or... You can take some risks, okay? So when it comes to workshops, you can buy a workshop, you can change its production if you don't like it, and also you can sell the workshop. Now, some workshops work good in different you know, scenarios, depending on how the economy goes in the game, something that you can't really control. Also, depending on what the patch is. Again, so if you want like the best, best workshop, look at it by patch, because if you're watching this video six months from now, it's gonna differentiate, and me saying this is the best workshop for this patch, is it gonna work for you if you're watching this down the line, okay? So, uh, how do you buy it? it? Also, very simple. All you need is the money up front. So you go and talk to the noble, that is the owner. You have to talk to the owner, by the way. Talk to Very now, stranger. Yes, yes, yes. And then you're gonna say, I want to buy your wine press. Now, you can choose if you want to buy it or not with the price. I'm gonna choose no. There it is, but if for you, you're gonna choose yes. But for me, I already have a bunch of, what's it called, workshops, as you can see right over here. And for this playthrough, I guess I'm deciding to go all tanneries because they have worked for me kind of good. Now, you might be wondering, it's not making me that much money. That is true. But at the same time, it's very low risk. If you don't get into any wars, if you're just starting out, the workshop will never get taken away from you unless you start wars because then they can kind of take it away from you if they take the town over but early game you don't really have to worry about it and again if you want to change the production you can go over here manage workshop and uh what's it called i'm pretty sure you can sell it right over here or you can change the production again very easy very simple okay now how does it go with uh what's it called caravans again this one requires money up front and a companion so once you have a companion once you have the money up front you're going to talk to anybody again doesn't really matter uh, i usually like to go for the more powerful person as you can see this person is powerful let's talk to them again boom and you could click the first option i wish to form a caravan now you have two options pay fifteen thousand for a uh, what's it called for an okay caravan or if you want one with better troops you could pay 22 uh, 1,500. I always get the one with better troops, but people have said that, you know, the regular caravan is fine as well. I'm just a sucker for, you know, more security, so I always pick the bigger option. But if you don't have enough for this and you want to pick the smaller option, do it. It might be very successful. Again, it's kind of random if it's, you know, successful or not. So uh, we're going to pick this. We're going to pick our, uh, what's it called, companion. Let's pick this right over here. And boom, your caravan is created. Now wait here some time and you're going to see the caravan pop out. There she goes. There she goes. All right. And both of these methods will literally just make money for you over time. Every single day there will be a tick of money. Now, um, the workshop can never go below zero. Caravans can go below zero. Let's say, for, exa for example, this caravan gets attacked a lot or they don't make the right profits. You might be on the hook for some of the money to get them back to where they were. So that is something that you have to kind of worry about. So before you do get the caravans, I suggest you have a little bit of money stocked up because sometimes you're going to have to help them 
but sometimes they're gonna help you a lot, okay? And caravans, they're very profitable, but again, they're a little bit more risky, and sometimes you're gonna have to pay for them, okay? Now moving on, you got workshops and you got caravans. What's next? Well, now you can become a mercenary. So if you are over a uh, tier one, clan tier one, which is very easy to get, very early on, you can get it just by doing normal things. Uh, you get renowned from battles, tournaments, and all of that in between. So once you have clan tier one, by the way, you could check your clan tier on the clan tier tab. Make sure this says one right over here, okay? You can become a mercenary. How do you become a mercenary? Uh, a mercenary is a sword for hire. And the sword for hire pretty much means um, you will be fighting for influence. So after every battle, siege, anything that gives you influence, um, the, what's it called, the kingdom that you join as a mercenary for, they're going to take your influence daily and they're going to transform it into dinars, okay? So they're going to take your influence and they're going to give you dinars back, okay? Now, how do you do this? Go back to your encyclopedia, go to home, go to kingdoms, and you want to find the kingdoms that are currently at war. If a kingdom's not currently at war, they do not want mercenaries. They do not hire mercenaries during peacetime, okay? So let's say, for example, we are close to Vlandia. So who is Vlandia at war with? Let's see who Vlandia is at war with. Are they at war? They're at war with is Azerai. So now if you want to find somebody, uh, let's start going down the direction of where the war is taking place. Usually it takes place in the border, as you can see right over here. The border between uh, Vlandia and Azerai. Let's go down here. And to become a mercenary, you don't actually have to talk to the leader. You can talk to anybody that is a part of Vlandia. That is an AI lord and roaming around. Stop there, stranger. Like this person. Okay. So you want to click. There is something I need to discuss. Uh, I would like to enter the service. Okay. And my what's it called? My sword is yours for the right sum. Now, fortunately for this tutorial, I already own a settlement. So that is another thing that I forgot to tell you. And to be honest with you. It really, it's, it's not going to be the same way for you because if you own a settlement, you don't have to be a mercenary no more because that is the um, the next way of making money. They're going to talk about this after the fact, right? But since I'm doing this one take, this option will be available for you. You're going to click this option and then they're going to give you their rates, okay? They're going to give you their rates per one influence. Now, usually I take whatever rate I can get. It really doesn't matter. Um, and I try to get into as many battles as possible. And try to get as much influence as possible because guess what the more influence you have the more you're going to get paid per day now going back to what i was talking about questing that quest with the brigands that we just talked about once you get this once you become a mercenary and you have to fight for uh what's it called for influence and get the nars back go back to questing and go back to those same quests with the help with the brigands and start taking out more and more bandit parties one after the other one after the other one after the other and you're gonna stack up your influence so quickly and you're gonna make so much money okay now the next way after becoming a mercenary you can become a vassal or you can start your own kingdom okay but and this is a big but becoming a vassal is more safer because when you become a vassal, by the way, how do you become a vassal? It's very simple. Again, you do the same thing. There's something I like to discuss. I like to enter the service, but you have to find the king. You have to find the king to become the vassal. You have to talk to the king, okay? Now, how do you find the king? Very easily. Okay, go back to the encyclopedia. Go to kingdoms, whatever kingdom you want to join. Let's say I want to join Vlandia. You click on uh, the leader, and his, uh, what's it called? Where he was seen last is always shown right over here. So as you can see, Sargets. That was where he was last seen. So around here, you just run around here. You check if his location changed by the time you got here and you talk to him. But it's going to be the same prompt, right? So same prompt as this guy. You're going to go to, there's something I'd like to discuss, enter the service, and I would like to pledge my allegiance. There's going to be a couple more um, things that you're going to have to say, but it's very straightforward. Just keep picking the options. And then he will say, yes, I want you. And here are some gifts. You get some gifts as you're a vassal. Um, for any of uh, what's it called kingdom you get some men and you also get um, a banner and then either a weapon or a horse depending on what kingdom it is okay and um, when you're a vassal you can start fighting in the wars well you can start fighting the wars as a mercenary as well but you can start owning land now owning land is very profitable it is extremely profitable you know it kind of mirrors real life, you know, land, land, landlords, they make a lot of money, you know, that's just, 
That's how it is. That's how the world works, right? But as you can see, you go to your clan tab, you go to your fiefs tab right over here. As you can see, I have a couple of lands, two towns, and one castle. And as you can see, it's making me a pretty penny, okay? And um, also, when it comes to towns, you can upgrade them. All of this stuff can get upgraded. You can select the governor. That sometimes will do better. As you can see, it shows you what the governor will do uh, better with. So every single governor does something else for you. Governors can be your companions, your family members, and all of that. But uh, all in all, whenever you get um, you know towns or castles, you can get them as a vassal or you can get them as your own kingdom. Again, vassal is more safer because you're going to join an existing kingdom that already has a lot of power. Um, and where is the power located? I don't know if it shows us right over here. But um, here it is. Uh, no, not right over here. Let's go to... Let's see if there's a way to see power without actually joining the kingdom. But you can kind of tell the power by going to the main uh, kingdom and going through the clans. You can't see who's in them by members, but as you can see, there's a lot of members. There's a clan tier six. They're rich, wealthy, and you can see there's a lot of clans that Vlandia has. And obviously, Vlandia has a lot of land. So again, you're going to have good backup, and you're also going to get a couple of fiefs just for joining. Not right away, but if you fight for Vlandia for a little bit, they're going to give you a couple of fiefs. And if you keep fighting, if you keep having good relationships with people in Vlandia, by helping them out um, with either quests, with either helping them out in battle, you will get more votes, you will get more fiefs, and you will get more money. Now, the ultimate end game is creating your own kingdom. Okay? Now, when you create your own kingdom, you make the rules. Okay? Now, how do you create your own kingdom? You need to be clan tier 4. You need to own a fief. Alright? This is a little bit hard. Now, also, if you are a vassal and you want to leave and create your own kingdom, just know if you choose to keep your land, like your fiefs, whenever you leave a kingdom, they will automatically go to war with you. But also, when you create your own kingdom, they will still automatically go to war with you because you're going to be a small kingdom and they're going to want to take you out. Now, how do you make your own kingdom? Let me show you very quickly. Once you have a fief, okay, you're going to want to, uh, what's it called? Go to manage town. You're going to want to select a governor. Let's just pick a random guy. Let's make him our new governor. Yes, yes, yes. Now let's waste some time so we can actually get over here and become the governor. All right. Now we're going to go to keep. We're going to go talk to him. I'm your. And the first option right here. It is time to proclaim a new kingdom. Boom, boom. I want to the language of the laws. You can pick between um, your starting culture or the town's culture. You're going to pick very well. Uh, we can name it, um, new, new best to ever do it, do it kingdom ever. There it is. All right. And show, and show shall it be. There you go. And now you created your own kingdom and now you have your own kingdom. And now you are the king. There are perks that come with being a king. There are certain bonuses. You can see you get an influence bonus just for being a king. And you also can make policy changes that make you more money. I have a policy guide down below as well that I'm going to show you. Uh, well, that you can actually check out. But yeah, if you go check it out, then I'll show you. But um, there are a lot of policies that can increase uh, how much money you make. Also, how much other things you can do. You know, how much influence you can do. How much taxes you can take. All of that okay so that is the progression of how you make money in Bannerlord now there are a couple of other ways to make money that don't have to really do with progression all right now how now what are the ways right so first is you can trade now trading is very simple you bring items that one area has a lot of and has a lot of production of to an area that doesn't have a lot of it now what do I mean by this for example, the Kazates have a ton of horse production. They have a ton of horse production. They rely on horses. Most of their troops rely on horses. They have cheap horses. Now, an area on the other side of the map, like this over here, does not have cheap horses. So if you put one and two together, you get buy horses from this area, you travel over here, and you sell them to this area. It's very simple. Now, how do you do this again? Look at the productions of the various villages, okay? 
Now, as you can see, fur, we got fish. Okay, now, before anything, fish and grain are pretty much everywhere. So that should be X'd out of your uh, trading um, kind of, you know, journey. Fish and grain are the two basic foods, and they are available everywhere in huge amounts. But the more, um, what do you call it? Specific, the more specific productions is what you want to look for. For example, uh, flax, you got fur. Now you're going to want to see, okay, there's a lot of fur production here. Now look inside the uh, map, where is there low fur production? That's what you want to do. Where you want to see, where you see low fur production, you bring that fur from here, you bring it over here. That's just the basic concept. I have a trade guide. It's a lot more informative. If you want to get into trading, really get into trading, I show you some good trading routes again down below. I'm going to link a couple of different videos down below. Okay, since, since this is a one take video, a lot of the more specific, if you want to dwell into it, all those will be down below for you. All right. But um, instead of trading, there's also another way. I don't like doing this way because usually there's still a lot of bugs that come with it. And it's very easy to become like a multi-millionaire doing it. But it is the smithy. The smithy, it works like this. All right. It's very basic. You smelt weapons that you have. Um, so kind of, you know, whenever you get into battles with bandits, if the weapon doesn't cost too much, you shouldn't sell it. You should just smelt it. It's smelting gives you resources. Now, how do you smelt it? Well, you need some, uh, what's it called? Some charcoal. And how do you get charcoal? You need some hardwood, okay? So how do you get hardwood? Well, there are a bunch of villages that sell it. Also, most towns sell it. And sometimes you get it from um, bandit parties, from uh, regular uh, AI parties. You get it from hideouts. Um, and sometimes I think even some quests give it to you as well. And uh, once you get that, as you can see, here's how the hardwood looks. I'm just gonna buy it just to show you an example. You're gonna go back to your smithy. You have stamina as well. By the way, you can use um, your main character and also a lot of other characters. If you're gonna go down the smithing route, make sure you use multiple characters because you don't want to use all the stamina up and then have to wait a day. You want to just continuously keep smithing with as much characters as you want, okay? So go to refine. There it is. We need some charcoal first. Let's get some charcoal. Let's smelt some of this stuff because now we have charcoal. It shows you what you're going to gain over here, what you're going to lose. Boom. Smelt that. Smelt that. And then when it comes to actually forging something, you make sure you have enough resources right over here. And also you can, um, as you forge more and more, by the way, the better, um, what's it called, types of parts you're going to unlock. The better types. The better you become at smithing, the more money you make. So if you just stick to smithing and you do it over and over and over again, and you have caravans running around, you have workshops working for you, you can make a lot of millions of dinars, okay? I typically don't do it as much because it's very easy to do so. And it's kind of why I saved it towards the end of the video because I kind of want you to try out all the other ways and kind of grind for it a little bit more. But this is an easy way to make money, okay? It's very easy. You just keep going with it until you reach like the high levels. You unlock, you unlock like a very high level part. Uh, your stam, I mean, your smithing goes up. As you can see, mine's at 125. It goes up dramatically high, and then you start making the really high tier weapons, and then all of a sudden you are going to be rich. And also early on, you can actually do orders for people. Now, as you can see, uh, you go and click on orders over here. And people want certain things, right? And they show you the difficulty. The difficulty, um, pretty much, I think it goes by your level, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, you pick the ones that are kind of in the green. You make how you make the item that they want, and if they're happy with it, they're gonna pay you. Very simple, very easy. But that's pretty much how you make money in Bannerlord. There are other ways, obviously. There's a lot of other stuff you can do in Bannerlord. You could do prison breaks. You could do, um, what else? Can't think of the top of my head because I've been talking for so long. But there are oh, you, there's alleys. Uh, there's there's a bunch. There's a bunch of different ways you can make money. You can finesse certain things in the game. I've talked about it previously. Check out my other videos. You know. But listen, those are the main ways to make money in Bannerlord. One take. Hope you guys liked the video. Um, and yeah, that's gonna do it for me. And I'll see you in the next one.